good morning students uh, in the last class uh, in couple of classes what in the previous couple of classes what we studied is about the kmap simplification right we studied for three variable input variables and four variable input variables we know how to simplify for the given completely specified functions how to simplify the expression in the soft form right in today's class what we'll study is we'll study about the incompletely specified functions here we call the incompletely specified function also is don't care terms first we'll understand what is completely specified as specified function and incompletely specified function now if we see when an output value is known for every possible combination of input variables the function is said to be completely specified right it means that for every input combinations we know the the output value once we know the output value for all the input combinations we say it as completely specific function right but there are scenario where where an output value is not known for every possible combination of input variables and these we call it as incompletely specified functions it means that when i say incompletely specified functions it means that the output is not generated for some particular input combinations there right it means that the output it means that the output is don't care for a specified input variables or input variable combinations right that we call it as incompletely specified functions so the output is dependent on those input combinations we call it as a incompletely specified functions and the mean terms or the max terms that are not used as part of the output function we call it as don't care terms have you understood this one what do you mean by incompletely specified here when i say incompletely specified the output value is not known for every combination of input variables it means that the output is not generated for a particular input combinations there right now we'll understand about this incompletely specified functions are the don't care terms through the example here if you see the example find the reduce the soft form of the following function what do you understand by this one now if you see here what we have we have an output variable z which is a function of input variables a b c and d which is equal to if you see this equation is given in what the complete complete set of mean terms so for which the output is logic 1 at the same time what we have is plus summation d if we see the summation d is nothing but don't care terms and what are those don't care terms here 0 2 and 4 here it means that for these input combinations what we have right the output does not care for those input combinations 0 2 and 4 right in the mean terms what we have here 1 3 7 11 and 15 for these mean terms the output is equal to 1 here and for the mean terms what we have 0 2 and 4 the output does not care about these mean terms right now how do you specify this in the the k map here the first since it is a four variable k map everyone draw the four variable k map the input variables what we have a b c and d here right the values what we see on the horizontal line 0 0 0 1 and 1 0 are the values for the input variables a b and the vertical what we have 0 0 0 1 1 and 1 0 are the values for the variables input variable c and d a is a, the most significant b and the d what we have is the least significant the bit now for loading the values if you see in the three variable k map or four variable k map what we used to do there for the mean terms for which the output is 1 for those mean terms we used to put it 
we used to fill the square with logic 1. Here also we need to do the same. Load the mean terms for which the value is 1. For which mean terms the value is 1 here? As you can see from the expression what we have. 1, 3, 7, 11 and 15. For these 5 mean terms, Z is 1. And for the mean terms 0, 2 and 4, the output is don't care. Right? So that how do you write this one now? You load the values now. Now 1, 2, 3, 7, 11 and 15. These are the mean terms for which the output Z is 1. And which are the, the mean terms for which the output is don't care? What we have? 0, 2 and and 4. Right? The 4 I have not highlighted. The 4 also there. Right? You can see from this one what we have. 0, 2 and 4. Right? Now how do you simplify this one? How do you come with a simplified soft expression for this kind of example where we have don't care terms there. Now the one thing what you should know is I have written it here everyone. I don't know whether you can see this one. Right? Now what I am trying to say is that now if you see if there was no don't care conditions this the don't care condition how do you used to simplify this one now? How you how we used to simplify this one now? We used to simplify something like this one. Right? If you consider right this was a the simplified expression what we had these this 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 is one term and this is the the second group what we have it right now since we have d here right d and d now we can use these don't care conditions to our advantage if the don't care conditions are the terms are the mean terms what we have which if they help us in creating if they help us in creating larger groups then we consider the don't care mean terms as logic one there right we consider that as logic one there if the don't care conditions or the don't care mean terms what we have right if it does not help us in creating larger groups of mean terms we consider this as zero here right understand here Right. The first thing, if the don't care condition, don't care mean terms what we have, if these terms help us in creating larger group of mean terms, then we consider those mean terms as logic 1. In the sense, we consider this as logic 1. If these don't care conditions help us, help us in what? In creating larger group of mean terms. Right. If it is not, we consider the don't care terms as zero there understood now what we have you can see from this example what we have zero is d two is d now whether these terms will help us in creating larger group of mean terms right yes definitely now what we can have we can have a group of four mean terms here that's correct so that when we group this it means that we considering the don't care condition as this mean terms as logic 1 and this mean term as logic 1 here, right? And then you know, this will be four groups of mean terms what we have it here. Re always remember that the don't care conditions could be used to our advantage. In the sense, when I say to our advantage in the sense, if the don't care terms help us in creating larger group of mean terms, we consider the do those mean terms which are don't care as logic one. If don't care terms does not help us in creating larger group of mean terms, those don't care terms we consider it as logic zero. Any of the mean terms while grouping mean terms, we consider only the, the mean terms which are logic one. Understand here. Since in this example, what we have the mean term zero and the mean term two, what we have are don't care conditions, but these two mean terms will help us in creating larger group of mean terms, right? If this was 0 or 0, we had only these two mean terms were grouped. Now what will happen? Now, the mean term 0, 1, 3 and 2, right? 
a group of four mean terms what we can have it because of the don't care condition that's the reason we while grouping we made sure that these are considered as logic one here understood everyone so that what is the simplified expression for this one now what is the simplified expression for this one now anyone what is this one now what we have zero zero right zero zero how do you write a bar b bar similarly what we have for this one now what we have one one what are the variables here c and d now this is the the simplified boolean equation in soft form for the given problem or for the given statement what we have everyone read this one if don't care terms help in creating larger group of mean terms then include don't care terms for grouping right it means that the don't care terms help us in creating larger group of mean terms then consider those don't care terms as logic one since you consider as logic one you can grip those mean terms also right so that what is the simplified expression we have for this one now so that these are the groups what we can have it so that what is expression for this one right this is another a bar b bar or c and d everyone understood this one any confusion you have with the the don't care conditions terms are the incompletely specified functions when i say incompletely specified functions the output is not generated for those input combinations if you see here we study combinational circuits here when i say combinational circuit the output depends on the combination of the input variables right depending on depending on those input combinations the output gets reflected the output could be zero or one for input combinations there right when i say incompletely specified functions the output is not generated for a specified few input variables variable combinations there right those we call it as don't care terms there and those mean terms or max terms for which the output is not generated we call it as what don't care conditions don't care terms and we specify that by what d we mention it as d and some author has put it as x there right the capital x the put it at the multiplication symbol there right right everyone understood this one any confusion you have it how to simplify the the given expression where you have the don't care terms we'll go to the next example so that as we go we'll see few more examples you'll be more clear with the, the concept how to simplify the the don't care terms now what we have the second problem reduce the following function using karnoff technique w an output variable w is equal to a function of input variables a b c d which is equal to summation of m 5 6 7 12 and 13 it means that for these five mean terms the output w is logic 1 and for 4 9 14 and 15 these mean terms are don't care term that's the reason it is specified as summation d d stands for don't care right don't care terms so that now the first thing since it is a four variable k map everyone draw the four variable k map and and for this input for this mean terms what we have 5 6 7 12 and 13 the w is 1 and for the mean terms 4 9 14 and 15 the w is equal to don't care so that in that square in that particular cell or the square you you write it as d there right everyone draw the the four variable k map now see for which mean terms it is 1 for which mean terms it is d accordingly write it in the the k map square 
everyone write it everyone double check with what you return and what i have written here we know that for the mean terms 5 6 7 12 and 13 w is 1 for the mean terms 4 9 14 and 15 it is don't care that's the reason we return in those mean term square as d there now see whether these don't care terms help us in creating larger groups of mean terms or not. If they help us in creating larger groups of mean terms, then include those don't care conditions. When we include those do don't care conditions, it means that we're considering those don't care conditions, those care uh, don't care terms of the mean terms as logic one there, right? Anyone? What is the simplified expression for this one? What is the simplified expression for this one now? Now, if you see this one, right, whether this we have here a don't care condition, we have don't care and don't care here. But these don't care terms, mean terms, what we have will help us in creating larger group of mean terms. So that how it will help us? So that will create this one, right? So that what we have? We have group of eight mean terms here, right? So that it means that when we are grouping this, it means that we are considering these don't care conditions as logic one. We are considering this as logic one and we are considering this as logic one. And that's the reason we are grouping all these mean terms there. What about this one now? What about this one now? What about this one now? Hmm? Now whether this don't care condition will help us creating a larger group of mean terms? No, right? If it is logic one, right? Take an example that instead of this don't care condition, if there was, this was logic one, at that time, yes, we need to include that one. But here what is happening, the mean term is don't care conditions. It means that the output is, does not care for this input combination. So that uh, since it does not care for the input combinations, what we do is, we consider this as zero. Why we consider this as zero? Because it does not help us in creating larger groups of mean terms here. Understood here? So that what we do will not include the mean term nine, which is don't care condition, right? So that we include only the don't care conditions, which help us in creating larger group of mean terms there. Everyone understood? So that what is a simplified expression for this one? What is W now? In sum of products form. Right? We're considering only this as group. The simplified Boolean equations is equal W is equal to B there. Correct? What we have is, you can see here 0, 1, 1, 1. Right? Which is common here? It is B here. Right? So that you write it as be there. Everyone understood this one? Any doubts with this? Anyone, any issues you have it, please raise the question and try to help it out.
no issues so that i can proceed to the next example okay okay the third example everyone note down this one and try this example in parallel with me reduce the following function using karnoff map technique output variable z is equal to function of input variables a b and c here we have three input variables a b and c is equal to summation m 0 1 3 and 7 for these mean terms output z is 1 and plus summation d when i say summation d those are those mean terms are don't care condition the mean term 2 is d the mean term 5 is d don't care right now since it is a three input variable k map everyone draw the the three input variable k map now a b and c draw the three variable k map for this one now now put the the values there for for which mean terms the output z is 1 for which mean terms the output is z is d there right looking at the equation everyone appropriately put the values into the the squares of the k map there so that what we have now we know that the 0 what we have is 1 the mean term 1 is 1 3 is 1 7 is 1 and which are the conditions for which it is this one don't care 2 is d this is d now now everyone please group it now and what is a simplified expression What is a simplified expression for this one, anyone? Yeah, I can see some students uh, writing the chart. Megha has written correctly there. Pratibha, yes, Hiremat has written. Okay. Yeah, you need to try it in parallel with me. That's good. I can see some students giving the answers correctly the irrespective whether the answers are correct or wrong trying is more important right trying is more important than being correct because when you try it that's when you get to know whether it is correct or wrong right when you try that's when you get to know it means that you learn something from that because you tried there right everyone understood this one right yes if you see here why i take online classes here is because it, it shows that when we take online classes, I am prepared for that classes. It means that as a faculty, I am responsible, right? I, I make sure that I read all the content. I prepare the PPT for that one. If you see this, the PPT content, what you have done, maybe reading, solving the problems, everything, understanding that took me only half an hour time for me, right? But preparing the PPT, right, right, took a lot of time for me right it's not like just a copy and paste from somewhere else i prepared all this on the ppt here right and also how i write it in the the board right step by step the ppt is also prepared like that step by step how to go proceed right what you need to do next right accordingly i prepared the ppt there are a lot of efforts which is went there right that's the reason like when i when when I take online classes, it means that I'm happy that the students are logging into the online classes on time. When they, when the students and the faculty enter the classes on time, it means that both are responsible. So that we, we make sure that our background work is done. As a faculty, I've read the things, I've prepared the PPT, everything. 
and and i make sure that everything is ready for my class and also you make sure that you get up early in the morning the whatever the work you have it in the morning you complete that and you make sure that 9:45 i need to attend this class so that you also are responsible here right that's a that's the reason like i, I want everyone to, since with lot of interest lot of efforts which has went in here i want you to take this at most important right when or whatever the instructions are given in the class here right and try to solve it any questions you have it you need to ask live here itself right that is advantage of online classes right because as a faculty i am here here to help you it out at the same time if one student is having the doubt big and the other students might be having the same doubt there right when you ask that doubt what will happen the others will also glad they will also get clarified with that one right hmm i mean yes i can see them bharat kumar answering that that's good kavya has returned it priyanka that's good very good so that what we have now we can see these are the groups what we can have because this d terms and this terms will help us in creating larger groups of mean terms so that what is expression we have a bar or c absolutely good i think the students who tried it who got the right answers if you not got the right answer also it's fine because at the end of the day trying is more important than being correct remember that one right trying is more important than being correct when you try it that's when you get to know whether it is right or wrong if you don't try you don't get to know anything right you assume that everything yeah i know understood everything and when you go to the exam you don't know anything there right that's the reason you need to try keep trying you need to put the problems onto the paper right when you apply the what you know about the rules and regulations with kmap you apply those rules you try to simplify that's when your understanding that's when you become more clarified with the the basics of simplifying with kmap there that's good i can see that most of the students getting the right answers next what we have reduce the following function using karnoff math technique everyone note down this one reduce the following function using karnoff math technique r is equal to the output variable r is equal to the function of input variables w x and just note down this one this is y here right everyone know that i'll just make the changes y and this is z here is equal to summation m 0 7 8 9 10 and 12 for this mean terms r is 1 for these mean terms 2 5 and 13 r is d d stands for don't care now everyone draw the four variable k map and substitute the values where the mean term is 1 and where the for which mean terms it is d the lateral entry student has joined everyone draw the four variable k map and substitute for 1 and d for appropriate mean terms now enter the solo values there we know the mean terms what we have 2 0 2 7 8 9 10 12 and 13 the r is 
and for the mean terms what we have phi yes i have written it only for phi here what are the others we have it 2 find 13 2 find 13 i have considered put it as logic 1 here i put it as d here d and t here everyone do that 2 find 13 Now what is uh, the simplified expression for this one? 2 and 13 are D. So that what is expression what we have it now? See if you see this one I think everyone might have done the grouping. I can anyone have the answers for this one. Okay. Now here what we have? This 13, this is D here. We had D here and we had G here. Right? And as I said here, the don't care terms, so we should consider logic one if they help us in creating larger group of main terms. Like since I've considered that as uh, uh, since these don't care terms will help us creating, I've changed it to one there, right? But the logical it is still D there. So that now what will happen here? We know that this corner mean terms are adjacent. So that what we have? This one, this term what we have, right? This one, this one, this one and this one are logically adjacent here. So that what is the, the expression for this one? And also you can this mean term 13 what we have, which is D, don't care condition. But this don't care condition will help us in creating a group of four mean terms so that we consider this as mean term 13 as logic one here and we group it right so that what we have this is one group of term this is what we have the second group of mean terms and the third what we have is this one third group of mean terms what we have it now what is expression for this one anyone any confusion here if you see here we we, uh, we had the same scenario while we studied the four variable k map when it is completely specified right we if you if you see the 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 seven problems in one of the problems of the four variable k map where uh, which is completely specified when i say completely specified the output is generated for all the input combinations there one of the examples we had the same scenario the corner one and I explained about how this corner mean terms are logically adjacent. So that what we have this expression you can see from the 0 0 this is 1 0 which is the common term what we have it 0 0 1 0 1 0, zero is nothing but 0 is common which is x bar and again what we have 0 0 1 0. And 0 0 is common 0 is represents the value for z in that, that that is nothing but z bar similarly for this one what we have 1 1 1 0 which is common term we have it w right 1 1 1 0 okay make the changes there this term maybe you have written it wrong what we have is 1110 1, which is common here w bar here and what is common between 0 0 and 0 1 here what is common is y which is nothing but y bar make this as w bar y bar similarly what we have for this one which is common here is 0 1 1 1 1 is nothing but z here and what we what is what is the term we have 0 1 0 1 is nothing but w bar x w bar x and z here make this as what w bar this one everyone make the changes there
any confusion you have it in this one any confusion we'll go to the next one then we'll go to the next one everyone write this to table for the given to table write the minimal minimum sop is nothing but sum of product form now instead of giving the equation in terms of the canonical sop which is in decimal equivalent notation what is given to us is a to table is given here as you can see here what we have the input variables are w x y and z it means that we have four input variables the output is q here and you can see here what is given here for the, the most of the input combinations it is given as one or zero and for some of the input combinations what we have zero one zero one it is given as a dash dash is nothing but don't care right it means that the output is not generated for those input combination or the output does not care for this input combinations there right wherever you can see in the output values for q here a dash if you see the dash there it means that it is don't care right it means that it is d here it dash is in here this is d this is also d here and this is d means that for this mean terms it is dd right so that now how do you come with an as i said here if the table is given always it is better to come with a the decimal equivalent notation right it is always better so that because in the k map for that particular decimal mean terms only we write it as a one or zero or don't care right that's the reason it is always better to write it in a decimal equivalent notation so that now we'll write the decimal value here what we have since it uh, four variables 2 raised to 4 is 16 combination so that our decimal values what we can have 0 to 15 so that we know that in we have 16 cells in a four variable k map now we know that for which decimal values it is one we know that 0 1 right but decimal value is 0 1 the q is 1 1 so that what we have written here it is you can see here it is 1 here and 1 and again for the decimal 3 this is 1 here again what we have for 7 it is 1 8 it is 1 similarly what we have for 12 it is 1 right so that what we have summation as i said here you can write it as summation or summation m right so that how do you know 0 1 3 7 8 and 12 for these mean terms the q is 1 and for which it is don't care here which are the mean terms we have it right don't care is what we can see here dash is here dash is for 5 similar dash is for which one 10 similarly here is 13 this is 14 here yeah. so that what we have 5 10 13 and 14 right for this mean terms the q is don't care you write it as d in the, the respective square there Right. Once you have the decimal equivalent notation, draw the, the four variable k map and those for whichever mean terms it is 1 and for whichever mean terms it is d, appropriately write in the those mean term squares there. Everyone draw the four variable k map and substitute for logic 1 and d. everyone everyone draw the k map and substitute for 1 and d looking at the the decimal 
equation what you have written there. Next, now everyone substitute that one. Everyone double check with what I have written and yours. We know that for 5, 10, 13 and 14 it is D, right? For this combination 0, 1, 3, 8 and 12 it is 1. And what about the other mean terms? 2, 4, 6, 15, 11 and 9 it is a 0, right? Some authors they write it as 0, some authors they don't write it as 0, right? But it is implied that it is 0 there, right? If you want you can write it as 0 or else you can leave it blank there. Now, anyone can come with an, a simplified expression for this one. Identify the groups of mean terms. Try to identify the prime implicants, essential prime implicants. Someone has given, Mega has given the answer as Y bar. Everyone, please double check if it is Y bar. It's going to end in five minutes. We'll try to wind up this soon so that we'll finish it off so that uh, again when we enter this class, we have a fresh problem, right? A new problem, right? Now group this one now. How do you how you can group this one now? Anyone? Now what we can have it for this one, if you can see from this one what we can do it there. If you see this is also one here what we have it, right. So that how do you group this one, we can group it as this way, right. Because it will create a group of four main terms. Similarly what we can have, we can have, we'll, I'll include this don't care condition also because, right, these two 8, 12, 10, 14 are adjacent, logically adjacent. We can create a group of four main terms here. And again, what about this one? This is the mean terms. It means that we need to include this one. But the 13 mean term is don't care conditions. Right? Since it is don't care conditions, if that don't care condition helping us in creating a bigger group of mean term, then only include or else don't include the don't care conditions. But since the mean term 0 is 1, that has to be included. That has to be included. Then how you can do that way? How you can do this one? Maybe what you can do is, if you see here, you can group this mean term 0 with the mean term 1 or you can group this one with what now again? This mean term 0 could be grouped with mean term 8 here. It means that we don't have, we have a non-unique solution for this one. Understood everyone, right? Because the mean term 0 could be combined with the the mean term 1 or the mean term 0 could be grouped the mean term 8 here. We can do either way there. So that it means that we have two simplified expressions now. So that what is the expression we have it now? So that as you can see here I have just as try to put the same. We can have this one the mean term 0 could be grouped with the mean term 1 or the mean term 0 could be grouped with the mean term 8 here. Right. So, so that we can have, we can either group with this way or this way, we have two simplified expressions. So that what is the simplified expression for this one? We have it. You can see from this one, what is this one? 1, 5, 3, 7, it is nothing in W bar, Z. 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. 0 is nothing but for W. So that is W bar, 0, 1, 1, 1. It is Z. Everyone double very verify the the expressions there right since i copy right i tend to do the mistake right if there is any mistake please let me know so that what we have 12 8 and 14 and this one what is common here 1 1 and 1 0 it is w there so that we have w and what 0 0 and 1 0 a 0 is nothing but for the value for z so that it is z bar similarly for this one it is you can write it as 0 0 and which is common term here 0 which is y bar 
w bar x bar and phi bar so that we have this expression and one more simplified expression what we can have since the mean term 0 could be grouped with the mean term 8 what is the expression for this one 0 0 1 0 which is common here 0 which is x bar right so that what we have is an x bar and what is common 0 0 right 0 0 is nothing but the value for y bar and z bar so that x bar y bar and z bar we have a non-unique solution for the given problem yes the mega is correct she got the right answers but we have we don't have only one simplified expression we have two simplified expressions here because the mean term zero could be grouped with one mean term or the mean term zero could be grouped with the mean term eight everyone please log off, log off from, from this one and use the same link to join again join again okay then thank you we'll join it in five minutes